Hey, what's going on? Vega here from Serpent X Special Forces, and in this video, I'm going to be testing out the iNeo C2605. Now, this is an external NVMe SSD enclosure. You could put it like a normal uh, M.2 SSD or an NVMe Gen 3, and I believe Gen 4. So, if you like content like this, whether it's tech, tech teardowns, cryptocurrency, crypto mining, please subscribe and don't forget to stay up to date by clicking the notification bell. Let's go ahead and switch you over to where we can open this bad boy up and take a look at what's inside. All right, so this is the packaging, the iNeo C2605. It has a 8,000 RPM fan. It does say USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C, not 3.2 Gen 2, or whatever the latest version is, but it's an NVMe uh, M.2 SSD enclosure. In the package, it looks like we get some type of welcome card. Gives us a guarantee. It's a guarantee card. It talks about the service, replacement, uh, exchanges, stuff like that. And then just a simple little package. Pull this guy out. And here is the actual enclosure. Now, as you can see, it actually has fin stacks on it. And I'm interested to see if how that helps out. I did do some thermal testing, type C connection right here. And then, and it looks like it says lock or unlock. And then that's pretty much it. This is the fan. So I'm not sure if it's intake or exhaust. It may be intake blowing air over the fin stacks right here. So I'm going to bust out the iFixit kit. Looks like it's a really small Phillips screw all our cables and everything that we need. Maybe there is instructions right here. So type C to type C cable, type A to type C cable, the little screwdriver that we need, but I'm going to use the iFixit kit. Oh, this is a nice little bag here. Nice little bag to contain the drive. Nice. So let's see here. Instructions say that we should be able to just slide it out. So there's two screws towards the front side and we should be able to just slide it out. So let's take a look. Maybe I won't use the iFixit kit. No, I'm joking. Now iFixit is not a sponsor of this video even though I would like them to be and I'm sorry if the uh, screen is a little bit jiggly for you. But let's see here. So let's talk about this, the screw right here and this screw right here. It's easy enough. It looks like it has a little bit of RGB too. This little clear ring on the far edge. We'll have to see. Okay, it's not pulling out. Maybe it is. All right, there we go. Wow, this is pretty nice. So I never really use any of iNeo's products. Um, Here's some of the componentry on the PCB. Front side is where our M.2 slot is. Type C little lock switch as it says. And did they give us any thermal pads or anything? Yep, some thermal pads in this packaging. Let's see what kind of thermal pads. Now generally, um, if, when you get thermal pads from a product like this, they're going to be cheap. Here's a little heat sink for it. So a heat sink and two thermal pads actually. Interesting. Um, these blue ones are not going to be really high efficiency, but then if it's gray or light white or whitish gray, those aren't really good at thermal efficiency, but it still should get the job done. Um, let's see how everything goes together. We got to put the M.2 into the enclosure. Uh, then the thermal pad on top and then the heat sink. Now, if yours comes with a heat sink, um, if it's the one that's in the XPG um, SSD or NVMe, you might be able to get away with it because it's just a thin piece of metal similar to what you get. Uh, but for testing, we need a Gen 4 drive. That's not. We're going to be using the Western Digital uh, WD Black SN850 Gen 4 NVMe drive really fast, two terabytes, really good speeds. So I already did the thermal testing on that. Um, 
Let's go ahead and get this into the enclosure and see what is what. Now, didn't I don't see a screw or anything, so maybe this just putting the heat sink on and going from there. I'll be very careful trying to put this in. Okay. So I wonder why it doesn't come with a screw. There it is. All right, there's the stand and everything. I was about to say, I know it has to have a screw or mounting mechanism, same thing that you would get for your desktop. So let me put this all together and show you what the device looks like on, and then we'll kind of go from there. Now I wonder why they gave me two thermal pads if one is for the bottom while one is for the top. Because I mean, this isn't really a heat sink, it's a PCB, but it's very interesting to me. I guess it depends on your drive size. So the thermal pad, well, I mean, they're all M.2, so they would typically all have the same form factor. Not sure the intent behind that. I might write to them. By the way, you can get this down below um, in the link in the description, but not exactly sure what the intent was there to have two different size. This one looks like 0.1 and this is 0.5. The blue is 0.5 millimeter. There we go, covering the cache, covering everything we, important that we need, giving a gentle press down. And now the hard part, trying to peel the plastic up. Okay, so if you look, there's a little angle, right? Right angle right there that hooks onto the top while this gets pushed onto the bottom. Get a nice little push so that the thermal pad is making good connectivity with it. And now we should be able to slide this guy back in. So note the type C where it is, the port. Sorry. So we're gonna slide it in just like so. Nice and carefully. All right, there we go. Now we need to put the two side screws in and our enclosure is set. So we're gonna turn it on and switch over to the main system, do some testing and performance data for you. And I'll show you if there is any RGB, I'll show you anything that's running how it looks. All right, so I had some time to test out the iNeo C2605 and I will say that we are most certainly handicapped by the connection in which we're using. So USB 3.1 Type-C uh, have a transfer rate of 10 gigabits per second, not gigabytes per second. Uh, and if we converted that, that's 1.25 gigabytes per second. And this drive is actually sought after by a couple people that want to expand the storage in their PS5, I would urge caution because these temperatures of these drives get really, really hot. If you want to do so, please pause the screen to look at the data, but I did a number of tests with ADO, Crystal Disk, and ASSSD. Also, the info reads and writes uh, peaks are in hardware info on the left-hand side. But we basically saw about 6 gigabytes per second reads and about uh, 3 gigabytes per second writes. What was concerning was the temperatures. And if we look in the upper left-hand corner here, the drive hit a maximum temperature of 91C with the chipset fan on X570 turned off. Remember, the B550 boards do not have a chipset fan. Once I turned it on, we saw the peak temperature drop down to 85. Once these drives get really hot, they'll start to throttle and you will lose some of that speed. However, once I got this drive all together, and started doing some testing. I saw some very concerning uh, things happen at the very beginning. It looked like it was a connectivity issue. I'm not sure exactly what it was, but I basically tore it down, took it out, 
disconnected the M.2, put it back in, put it all together, and then on the second go around, we were able to get a better connection. This is on the Type-C to Type-A regular USB port connection. You could speeds are just drastically low. Uh, 416 writes and about 400 megabytes read, and that was disturbing, but again, because of the connection, what can you expect? When we did over to Type-C to Type-C, which you do get both, you get, like I showed you earlier, uh, you want to make sure you're using a Type-C data cable. It should be able to charge a device and transfer data. A lot of Type-C cables, like the ones you might get in a gas station, is just for charging only. So just bear that in mind. You don't, you don't want to just grab some uh, junk and plug it in and think that you're going to get the speeds you need. But when we do use the Type-C to Type-C connection, we can see we're getting maybe not 1.25 gigabytes per second, but we're getting close to that one gigabyte per second barrier, both on the reads and writes. Obviously, there was some thermal throttling happening, and unfortunately, with this enclosure, there is no thermal sensors in it, so I can't tell in the lower left-hand corner here. We could see that it was 48, 48, 49, 49, so we're not able to get any data, but we could see thermal throttling happening. Why? Because during the testing, especially at the bottom here, we dropped drastically on the writes. So, what I would recommend is these drives, Gen 4 drives, should only be used for desktop not so much for external enclosures instead of getting a gen 4 you know pc uh excuse me gen 4 nvme ssd uh maybe just get a regular nvme ssd you know it might be pcie 3.0 whatever that's fine uh like the crucial p2 uh the write speeds and the read speeds are a little bit lower uh still over one gigabytes per second and it will get the job done but you can pair this with your enclosure and get somewhat close to the speeds that you would on a desktop rather than handicapping your gen 4 drive with an enclosure especially if you don't want an enclosure like this it is it does do a great job uh, it did get a little bit warm to the touch when i was holding it uh, during testing the fan wasn't annoying even though the listing says it was 8000 rpm and the rgb is not controllable it's just going to be a rainbow effect and that's it but it does do a great job and if you are looking for something other than this what i would recommend is the sabrent uh, external enclosure which I'll have linked down in the description as well as the uh, C2605 but it got the job done this is something good for somebody down the road maybe doing some editing content creation need to store their media because their laptop doesn't have all the storage in the world but that's gonna do it for me today please do me a favor on the way out please hit the like button as well as the subscribe and notification bell to stay up to date as and also check out some of the links down below that help support the channel and I greatly appreciate your time you all take care I'll catch you in the next one